Today, we'll learn how to navigate around Lens Studio, how you can configure your project to get started on building for spectacles, how you can connect and deploy lenses to spectacles, where you can get additional resources to build more advanced experiences. You can start by downloading the latest version of Lens Studio by going into ar.snap.com slash downloads. Keep in mind that Lens Studio releases at a much faster cadence than Spectacles. So not all of the latest Lens Studio will be compatible. Please make sure to check the compatibility table before downloading. To find the compatible version of Lens Studio, scroll down to the Get Older version. So let's begin the starter project for Spectacles. When you first open Lens Studio, you'll be entering the Lens Studio homepage. Lens Studio can be built for many different platforms. For this video, we'll focus on building for Spectacles. So let's begin the starter project for Spectacles. Each panel might be configured differently based on the project. So in case you do not see any of the panels we will talk about, you can go to the top section window and select the panel you want. The scene hierarchy panel list out all of the scene objects that live in an active or an inactive state of your scene. Scene objects are objects which contain transform components, such as position, rotation, and scale, as well as components which drive behaviors of the object, such as playing the audio or rendering the visual of the scene object. The Scene View panel represents your scene in a visual way, usually those with rendering component, such as render mesh visual, or image component will be visible in this panel. Next, we have the inspector panel, which will allow you to view and edit properties in your scene object, assets, materials, and more. For example, if I wanted to change the initial position of my Saturn, then I can change the transform. The asset browser panel lists out all of the resources that are available in your project, such as scripts, sound effect files, textures, and 3D models. The preview panel is a simulation of how your lens might behave on device. There are different modes you can set. For example, there is the multimedia preview, which are a set of pre-made videos with tracking data, which are typically used for mobile development. The webcam preview opens the webcam view, again, usually for mobile development. For spectacles, the interactive preview will be the most beneficial. When you navigate in the preview, you can navigate by pressing the WASD to move forward, back, left, and right, and Q and E to move up and down. If you press the lock Y button, it will give you free movement and not let you be bounded to the floor. If you go too far, you could press the reset interactive environment to go back to zero, zero. You could also use the mouse to mock the hand targeting and even simulate a pinch with the mouse button down. This is thanks to the special component that comes with the Spectacle Starter Project and the Spectacles Interaction Kit called the Mouse Interactor. In the Interactive Preview, you can change the Interactive Preview to a set of pre-made environments. In case you do not want to have the Spectacles overlay to know the bounds of the display or have the additive look, you could turn this off by going into the Device Type Override and set it to Spectacles and put No Simulation Mode. If you need to reset your lens from the beginning, you can simply press the reset button. Changes in the interactive preview are not reflected in the scene hierarchy and scene view. However, Lens Studio allows you to inspect a single frame of your interactive preview scene to help you better debug. You'll notice that the contents that are denoted blue are the ones that are instantiated during runtime. Now, Let's start to build a custom script which allows you to develop custom behaviors in your lens. First, let's set up our preference settings to make sure that we're able to iterate fast. You can have your project autosave in specific intervals. I also recommend changing the external editor for JavaScript and TypeScript. Now let's create our script and open it in our IDE. First, let's go to the asset browser and create a new script. Double click on it and it will open up in your IDE. For this demo, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code, but really you could use any kind of IDE you want. So I'm just going to simply add a print hello world and save it and go back into my Lens Studio. And 
drag this script that I just created into my scene hierarchy panel. And you'll notice that we have a hello world. So now I'm going to purposely create errors in my script. Instead of base script component, it's just going to be called base script component. And you'll already notice that Visual Studio Code is um, yelling at me. But also in Lens Studio, this type compilation has failed. In the logger panel is where you'll be able to debug your experiences. In case this gets a little bit overwhelming, you could also clear your logger panel so that you get a fresh start. If you ever need to show the log information again, if you have a TypeScript compilation error, you could go to the TypeScript status and click on Show Errors in Log, and the error log will once more show in your logger panel. When you're debugging in the studio, you could also set the different filters. If this is on studio, if this is on Snapchat mobile lenses, is this a plugin or is this log information coming from spectacles? So once you're ready to test your lens, you must first connect your spectacles in order for you to deliver it to your device. First, go to My Lenses and log in. And it's important that you're logging into the same account that you paired your spectacles to. Then select Enabled Wired Connectivity. And once you're successfully connected, you could press Send to Spectacles. You'll notice that the lens was sent really quickly within 4.9 seconds. And I could play the lens in my device. And you'll notice that you could also filter for spectacles only debug logs so that you'll be able to better debug issues on spectacles. You could also connect to the spectacles monitor. The spectacles monitor will help you better debug for better performance on your devices. So once you're ready to publish your lens, let's make some tweaks to the project settings first. First, let's change the lens name to my first lens. Make sure that the platform setting is made for spectacles. And if we wanted to have a custom icon, snap spectacles, generate. Well, that's pretty interesting. Let's choose that one. And then click on the publish button. And this should automatically proceed you through the My Lenses portal. Um, so just wait for this to finish loading. And once it loads, we'll set the organization and then click on Submit Lens. Then we have to choose a category. Let's see, I'll just choose Funny. And then click on Publish. You'll notice that the spectacles do not support the visibility option, so we'll just click on Publish. Your lens has successfully been submitted, and it will take around one to three days for your lenses to be available. For more resources, you can go to developers.snap.com slash spectacles, which is the one-stop shop to easily find resources to help you build for spectacles. You can discover the sample projects in our GitHub, as well as joining our Reddit community, finding content for the asset library, and finally, discovering new features for the platform. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to seeing what you all build with Spectacles.